Greetings, greetings, all my dreamers and dreamettes. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support the brand, it's inspiredbydreams.shop. And we have everything from your hats, snapbacks, hoodies, t shirts, a little bit of everything for you to dress outside of the box. Okay, today's episode is a very special episode. I know you guys have been waiting for part two. The real estate scams. I've been very. I've been looking into a lot of things going on in the real estate business, as far as the real estate scammers and the scams that have been going on in 2024. And this video right here is it's shocking, but it's also an eye opener for the people out there just looking for, to buy property, or people out there just looking to be, you know, a real estate agent. So thank you for the love on the channel, you guys. And here it is. This is the special part two, real estate scammers. Let's get into it. knowledge he was the viral guy in atlanta spitting finance knowledge to anybody who listened on the street corner but now jay morrison is in hot water i invested forty thousand five hundred dollars it's two thousand dollars he got fifteen thousand people to invest in a real estate fund 11.7 million dollars they all raised a new black wall street was on the horizon the money has been uh, uh just evaporated and apparently there's little to show for it and investors are going off on social media. Everything done in darkness must come to light. Dick As a fellow real estate uh, developer, um, I took a liking to what he was talking about. And Julian Gordon says it seemed that Jay Morrison had it all figured. He called it the Tulsa Real Estate Fund in honor of what was known as the Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma back in the early 1900s. What? It was a haven for successful black businesses before a white mob set it on fire in 1921. 300 people died. The Tulsa Real Estate Fund was a unique concept and turned out to be the largest black owned real estate crowd fund. What? Everybody had to put in at least $500. Gordon, a real estate investor himself, he put in $40,000, the most of anyone. I never invest anything that I can't lose, but when you invest, you don't intend to lose at the same time. And that's what Gordon says happened what? with this. Their crown jewel investment, a 30,000 square foot event and workspace called the Legacy Center in Atlanta. It was a big deal when it opened up in January 2020. Everybody called it the Black House. According to SEC filings, the Tulsa Fund put aside over $3.5 million to both acquire it and develop it. What? But I don't believe in just flipping houses. I believe you got to flip the people in the community as well. It's genius. Politicians, well-known pastors, celebrities were all there to celebrate the boom that was happening. This is Jay Morrison and his wife, Ernestine, who said back then that they would even be moving their personal businesses into the space. So it's not that Jay's just bringing his company to the Legacy Center because it looks cool. I'm bringing a reputable, qualified Class A tenant to the Legacy Center to anchor us and make sure we got some revenue coming in every month. It's genius. But as they quickly learned, COVID-19 would slow everything down. Gordon says there was no bounce back plan and the communication started to fade. I was a friend at this time and I sat in the Legacy Center in his corner office and I was uh, told him straight up that your name has a lot of mud in the streets, but you have 15,000 people who are your biggest fans and believe in you um, who he has since then uh, alienated and, and really cut us off in many ways. He says he began reading SEC filings and learned that both the SEC and DOJ had been conducting an investigation on the fund and Jay Morrison. It was revealed in 2019 that the government issued a subpoena seeking documents and information about the fund's operations, but nothing later came of it. And by May 2020, the investigation was closed, but Gordon says that he still noticed that the math legit. wasn't mathing, that $11.7 million initially raised was being swallowed up, losing millions year over year, according to these SEC filings, with no recorded profit. And at the same time, the fund manager, Jay Morrison, was allegedly paying himself 
and management fees. He's eaten uh, over a million, almost probably two million by now in management fees. He's paid his wife through the organization. She used the facilities uh, without probably any payment. She hosted her podcast there. She hosted her greenlit ATL events there. And I guarantee that there's no transactions of her paying us, the investors or the entity um, for the usage of that space. We spoke to Mon Cherie Robinson, who invested $500, the minimum required to join. She says that although it wasn't a lot of money, Morrison hasn't communicated much as to what's been going on. And to her surprise, she found out just weeks ago on social media Look at that the crowd. Legacy Center was being sold their anchor investment listed here for $3.65 million. I just feel like it's real diabolical for you to take advantage on the vulnerabilities of the average person. We can't keep starting over. And this is a smack in the face with someone who took a gamble. The internet has since caught on and have been blasting Morrison on social media. There are over 15,000 victims of his lies and incompetence. Once again, he's pulling on the emotions of black people. Without a board of directors, I, as an individual investor, have no other way to hold him accountable Scammers or influence the direction of the fund. Many filing complaints with the SEC against Jay Morrison, accusing him of misappropriating funds, even buying personal properties with it. This is one of them in South Fulton Georgia, which is a suburb of Atlanta. It was a purchase through the fund, right? Um, and so he purchased that in the 27 acres that are adjacent to it somehow also ended up in his name. And he ended up trying to hide that transaction by creating an anonymous LLC called South Fulton Rentals in New Mexico and um, and then transferring that property into his name. Morrison was catching so much heat about it that he addressed it in a town hall investor meeting last year. He called it a rumor. So the facts are that the property was sold by Treff for $875,764.85 that netted the fund a $25,000 gain on the sale in under 60 days. This is all contract, this is all in contract, this is all documented, this is all from uh, over a year ago, this exists. But when we rush to judgment uh, or have miscommunications, uh, we can make these dangerous allegations. Latoya Freeman, she's been in the background listening. From the trail that I follow was, hey, the fund purchased some land, the fund couldn't basically kind of go and develop that land into what it needed. So basically it sold him that land back. So She's an experienced investor and says that she invested two thousand dollars into the fund as black people we always say we want to come together and, and you know practice group economics and so that was probably the thing that really drew me in any return but there there was the one dividend she says in 2021 everyone did receive a dividend payment depending on how much your original investment was Great. freeman got about 75 dollars hey 99 percent of business is failing in that 10 years right in, in a 10-year period and so particularly with co-working space COVID, you know, there should have been a pivot to more your traditional real estate. I don't believe it was intentional. I just think it kind of, you know, unfortunately kind of got hit with, with COVID and didn't pivot. And so those are questions I do have for Jay is like, there should have been a pivot. I, I get it. The Legacy Center was kind of the, the marquee, but hey, you know, maybe just sticking with a traditional real estate plan. Gordon, though, says that he's not buying it and wants the SEC to reopen their investigation. And he's not alone. Now, if they investigate and they find that everything he did was above the belt and OK, then all good. All good. I need us to step up and spin the block for us. I want people to hesitate to take advantage of us. An elderly couple needed a personal loan. Their grandson offered to help and in the process convinced them to hand over the deed to this house. That was the beginning of the end. And I don't know where we're going to put these. Cause Verna and Hank Kowecki have to pack everything so and move. They're being evicted from their home of 56 years in Thousand Oaks. Every time you mention my house or my wife. What? It's, it's rough. Losing the house is incredibly painful for this couple in their 80s. But it's how they lost the house that hurts the most. They say they were scammed by their own grandson. People in the neighborhood told me all about it, but I still couldn't believe it. Not from him, I couldn't. And I don't know how a person 
can have a behavior like that. Doug Emerson is one of the neighbors who broke the news to the elderly couple. He noticed that when Hank and Helen were out on Sundays with their grandson, realtors would be showing the house to potential buyers. Emerson did some digging and discovered the grandson the couple loved dearly was selling the house without their knowledge. I asked him outright when he came by, I said, is my house for sale? He says, oh no, no, don't worry about it. But it was for sale. Not only was the house for sale, all the equity was gone. He took out $360,000, then he took out another loan for $65,000, and took out another loan for $47,400. When the couple confronted the grandson, they say he left and never came back. I just feel lost. To the extent I wanted to commit suicide at one time, because it, it's just too much, too much. I'm hoping something will happen and we can get it back. But, uh, I don't know how, but you never know. Many men have said, well, help us out. Now, sadly, what happened to Hank and Helen is quite common. Financial fraud is the number one type of abuse against the elderly. And in 50 to 70 percent of the cases, it involves family members, as in this case. Now, Hank and Helen, they're right here. Come on in. Let's talk to you both. Uh, where are you planning to go? We don't have a place to go right now. No place to go. No, we had no, no place at all. Now, have you heard back from your grandson? No, none at all. We haven't heard nothing. Nothing. Now, I understand you have filed a lawsuit in hopes of having the eviction, a judge ruling that you can stay a little longer here. Uh, Wednesday is the last day? Yes, Wednesday is the last day. Yeah. Wednesday is the last day. I am so sorry. I mean, all of us are just devastated for you. How have, have you addressed this with your grand? The thought alone that somebody can do that to their own grandparents. People that do anything for money and it's sad. Grandson, I mean, what? what no, I have no contact with him whatsoever, and I don't think he would face us. No. Why would he do this? That's that's, that's number one question because. We were such wonderful friends, and I didn't ever think she that he would do, do anything that. for him. Every time he would come over here, she would give him food, anything else. He'd come for breakfast every morning. Every it's morning. just heartbreaking. Yes. So the neighbor who was the one who alerted both of That's you right. started a GoFundMe page. It is called Save Hank and Helen's Home. But in this case, they would need to raise a lot of money. The company that purchased the house is not selling it cheap. In fact, they're asking for a higher price than what the market is going for. Is it too late to save this? No, it's impossible. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, I don't know how we're going to work that out, but we're going to have to find a place to go. And I hope it happens, and, you know, that to this, that the other people find out that you can't live like that, do things like that to people, older people. So, I understand you were looking into affordable housing, but there's a long list. Yes, there is. There's a long list. The best I could do possibly is the end of September. That's, that, that's iffy. Okay. If we, then we, we got a couple of days, we might have to leave here. I don't know where we're going to go yet, and we still haven't got right. things packed yet, what we have years ago when the elderly couple needed a personal loan. Their grandson. Eric Thune and his wife, Catalin, recently retired to Santa Barbara. Finally decided to pull the ripcord and move out of the Bay Area. They put their Northern California home on the market. And then about a week later, something odd happened. I get a text from my pool guy saying, do you know there's people at your pool? Eric's home security camera spotted a family heading to his backyard pool where they soaked up the sun. My mind was spinning. It was crazy to hear that you know, it's a violation, right? I mean, this is your property. You don't expect to hear that people that you don't know are there. It's just going a little too far. Having a party, you having your, a good old time in somebody else's house. That's come on, y'all. Eric's pool guy put the family on the phone. They told Eric they'd rented his pool through Swimply, a site where you can rent private backyards by the hour. He said, your pool is listed there. And I said, no, it's not. You're trespassing. Pay attention to this scam. This is a new scam. You guys got to really, really watch out for people selling people property and, and pools and areas and places where 
It doesn't even belong to them. Let's just listen listen to what he's saying. Thing you need to leave or I'm going to call the police. But sure enough, Eric's pool was listed on Swimply, but he didn't do it. Apparently, a crook posted Eric's pool, snatching pictures of it from real estate sites to pocket the $46 an hour rental fee. I'm shocked, right? How could somebody post a listing without verifying that they actually own the property? A good question. We asked Swimply that too. The answer? They don't confirm the person listing the property owns it. But Swimply did say once a listing is posted, it's not immediately searchable on its site. First, the company uses fraud detection to catch bogus listings, which are removed within 24 to 48 hours. But that didn't happen for Eric. And Swimply didn't remove his fake listing until he reached out to NBC. They can talk till the cows come home that they protect you, but I don't believe it. The I-Team was curious about Swimply's fraud detection, so we teamed up with our sister station in the Bay Area. Here's the pool I posted that I don't own. Our I-Team producer listed a backyard pool for rent, but the property is owned by an NBC boss in the Bay Area. In turn... I'm going to try to post a listing. A Bay Area intern posted our producer's L.A. rooftop patio for rent. She grabbed the image from the real estate site Zillow. It's asking me to finish listing. Both properties were listed and immediately searchable on Swimply's site. The listings were there for weeks. I think that's appalling, to be honest, that they can take listings for pools that they've never confirmed that somebody owns that property. We asked Swimply what happened. It said the company's extreme growth resulted in some instances of fraud slipping through its cracks. It insisted what? fake listings are extremely uncommon and it's committed to catching fraudsters. To help do that, it said it's added additional safeguards like adding a button so users can easily flag suspicious activity. I don't own this pool. But even after this response from Swimply, our fake listings were still on the site until we finally took them down. Eric says it's a warning for all homeowners. I just want people to know that this, you know, especially if you've got your home for sale, you need to watch out for this. Learning, if you're looking for a new home, you need to look at something other than the price. WCT investigative reporter Michael Pratt is looking into real estate scams and how you can protect yourself. Michael, there are several types of real estate scams, but you're told that fake listings are on the rise and scammers could make off with thousands of dollars. Yeah, Fran, and because it is such a competitive housing market, I'm told some buyers are putting in offers sight unseen on properties, and that could lead to some serious issues. With the housing market exploding over the last few years, it's quickly become a seller's market and a scammer's market too. If you look at what has happened, the fraud, the person committing fraud will advertise the property if they're on the selling side at a great price, at, you know, below market, and it look, really look, appears to be a great deal. And it's the old adage, if it appears to be a, a, too good to be true, it probably is. It's particularly an issue with for sale by owner. It's not through a broker, but it's for sale by owner. And they will um, advertise it either on, on newspaper or something like that. The other, the other area that's easy is vacant uh, land. In December of last year, the North Carolina Real Estate Commission posted a notice warning realtors of fake seller scams. Steve Mitchell, president of Cape Fear Realtors, says any property can become a target, but vacant land is often used by scammers. They can put a sign on the property, advertise it for sale, try to get it under contract, and uh, there's varying degrees of things that they're trying to do as far as either due diligence fee, earnest money, or just or the proceeds in general. Meaning a small down payment or a full purchase could be gone in the blink of an eye to scammers that operate online. While there are plenty of legitimate for sale by owner listings, Mitchell says a certified realtor can help take the guesswork out of the sale. When you hire a realtor who is trained and educated to know um, how to ferret out the, rigid, the actual buyer and property owners, uh, you are, you're doing things to minimize that risk. Because navigating the housing market can be a nightmare as it is without having to worry about someone scamming you out of your dream home.
And Mitchell said he's received warnings from the New Hanover County Sheriff's Office about the rise of these scams here in our area and says one of the biggest things to look out for again is if a deal sounds too good to be true, it probably is. The alleged scammer behind the shocking attempt to snatch Graceland from the family of Elvis Presley is coming out of the woodwork. An email he sent to Inside Edition declares, we've stolen millions from you blind fool Americans. We sit back and laugh at you idiots. Come and find us in Nigeria. Just last week, Elvis's granddaughter, actress Riley Keough, foiled the attempt to steal Graceland when a judge threw out the outrageous claims. But we're now learning that other brazen efforts have been made to steal iconic buildings from their rightful owners. The brazenness of it, the sheer volume of it, is really, really shocking. A scammer actually tried to steal Petco Park home of the San Diego Padres. And 48-year-old Mickey Burrito has pled not guilty to allegedly trying to snatch possession of the iconic New Yorker hotel. Another scammer targeted Halle Berry's LA home and even tried to have the locks changed. 24-year-old Arnaldo Ortiz targeted some of the wealthiest neighborhoods in Dallas. Here's Lisa Guerrero. Several of the homes were mansions, multi-million dollar properties in swanky neighborhoods like this. He stole this $2.6 million mansion and this $1.2 million house. Assistant District Attorney Philip Clark says it's the craziest case he's ever seen. Ortiz files this fraudulent deed, takes it to the marshals, says, I own this property now, kick those people out. The marshals have to do that. They, they go to the door, they say you have three days to move out, you're being evicted. Ortiz stole an abandoned Walmart, a Krispy Kreme donut shop, even a Burger King. How do the scammers do it? They forge a deed and file it with the county clerk. Easy as that. I don't want to broadcast to the world how easy it is to commit. On the other hand, the only way we're gonna fix it is if people understand this. It's not taking out a PPP loan because some people did not have to pay them joints back, but some took it too far. Like this lady right here, why would you take out a $7 million PPP loan and not only not pay it back, but you use the money to buy pink Rolls Royce like you was Killer Cam or something, a motorcycle in a ring for 150000 Can we talk about it? Sis was living a hot life during the pandemic. She was living a life during the pandemic. To have a car that pink, that looked like Pepto-Bismol. Imagine driving around in Atlanta, the only place you could drive around with a Pepto-Bismol car. And now you're going to jail for it. So imagine sitting up in prison, all you're thinking is, I never should have bought that Pepto-Bismol car. I don't care if it's a Rolls Royce, that thing is ugly. It looked like a piece of Laffy Taffy or bubble gum after you, it's stuck on the bottom of your shoe or you've been chewing it too hard and you spit it out. Can we talk about it? Sis was living that good life during the pandemic. She had no worries. She was giving out money here, there. $7 million in PPP. See, I salute the people that took out the little PPP loans and then didn't have to pay them back. But some of y'all took it way too far, and the government is catching up to y'all. They are catching up to y'all. They are checking the books, and they are checking it twice before this year is over. And they are taking y'all to jail because it's a fat to real crime. PPP. Y'all took out this money, this relief money, and y'all relieved yourselves. In a motorcycle, Sis was really living a life. She really thought she was Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise. Why would you get a motorcycle? You know, imagine being a government auditor. You just read it. She bought a pink Rolls Royce. That's it. You go to jail. That's it. I don't even need to see no more. Then you're reading all the other stuff. A $150,000 ring. Sis, you was living that life. And you had a good job. You was an attorney in Atlanta. You was a black queen in Atlanta. You had some money. No, I mean, you was probably in Decatur or Buckhead. This is Decatur or Buckhead behavior. Maybe a little Midtown in a... Like, can we talk about it? Sis... That car is egregious, it's ugly. I've never seen a more hideous luxury vehicle. And now you're going to jail for that. Imagine just sitting up, your, your cellmate asks you, what'd you do? I bought an ugly uh, Pepto-Bismol car and I stole $7 million from the United States government. Just, just say that with me. I stole $7 million from the United States government. You're going to jail. <laughs> it don't matter when you did it, how you did it, and you on record. 
And it's my thing about y'all PPP loans. Y'all took all these PPP loans out and didn't have no business. Y'all literally had no business doing it. No type of business. Y'all was registering it to Roger Corp and um, Isaac Corp and to Sean Corp and all these other names of these fake ass businesses. And y'all didn't think, let me actually flip this money. This is why I'm mad at that. All that pandemic money we was getting, we was not thinking about flipping. I wish I'd go back in time. A lot of people wish they'd go back when they were super young. No, I want to go back to December 2019 and just tell myself the playbook like, yo, coat, um, Bovitt's about to hit. You know, I can't say the C word because they flag it. Bovitt's about to hit. Um, yo, Stimmies is coming. I'd be like, Stimmies? I'd have been so confused. PPP, Stimmy. I wouldn't know what I was talking about, but I would have went back in time like one of them... Um, sci-fi movies like yo ppp stimmy take all the stimmies you get because some of y'all's going state to state to state to state to state to state taking out ppps y'all ain't in jail yet but this lady in jail seven million dollars from the united states government says you bugging out you you the ppp hall of fame they must have a ppp hall of fame hug um the only with the hellcat dude and a bunch of other people is in the, the ppp hall of fame of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. They got you on a list of the most notorious PPP scammers. And of course, the queen PPP scammer would be from Atlanta. Look at her. And you know she got the one gold tooth. She looked like she got the one gold tooth. She was balling out. I wish I would have met you during the pandemic. Again, I only got one. I got a few regrets. You know you always say, oh, I wish I could go back to a period of my life. I want to go back to the pandemic, right? Before the pandemic start. And I'd have made it the pandemic. And I definitely would have flipped that money and not bought no Pepto-Bismol car. Can we talk about it? Sis was living a high life. Now she's living like a low life in prison. Oh, man. And you know they had to get her. Imagine the judge. How am I going to let you beat this? Just seeing that car. There's no way. What lawyer? You'd have to dig Johnny Cochran up. And I hope she ain't defending herself. She probably should just defend herself since she a lawyer. Again, you just do your whole law degree, and now you got to lose your law license because if you're convicted of a felony or any kind of misdemeanors from the bar, they kick you off the bar and you lose your law license. So even if you get out of jail, you don't have no career no more. You worked all that time for a law license just to scam. But lawyers are scammers, so can we talk about it? Seth, would you have bought that ugly car? Fraud. Listen, I got a few regrets, but we all got that one regret. I just want to go back in time and whisper, put it on a little note. Just whispered in my ear, what, P P P, get it, start up. But again, y'all should have really started real businesses and used that money for real businesses, but now y'all all looking crazy. Y'all didn't really think they was gonna come find y'all? All I can say is, it could be so hard saving for the little that we work for in these times. And for somebody, could just, for somebody to just come around and take it from you and scam you out of your money it just takes a different level of greed a different level of hate for somebody that you can do that to somebody and take their life savings and just run off and especially do it to somebody in your own family that was just it was hurtful and it's very it's just, it's just very deceiving man you guys let me know what you think about these real estate scams and you have to be very careful if you're looking into buying property be careful out there because people are looking to just take you for what you have the little you have, they'll take your last. So until next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe.